Hey guys, I'm Daniel from Consider Tech. Today we're going to be talking about the Google Chromecast with the Google TV. This is the Google Chromecast with Google TV, and today I'm going to tell you basically my full on review of the Google Chromecast TV. So, my initial thoughts are I really like it. Like, it really improves the Google Chromecast by quite a bit, actually. Um, it's very easy to use. It has it, it has a lot of power. Like it, it, it's not a Chromecast anymore. Like it feels like an Android tablet or phone or whatever. It feels like an Android on my TV. It's really, really, really cool. And I know most Android TVs are like that. Um, but I've never had an Android TV. This is my first Android TV, and I that's just my full like just initial thing of it. Like it literally feels like an Android tablet on the TV. It is so cool. But we're gonna dive into the specs right now. We're gonna dive into the specs. We're gonna dive into the goods and bads of it. My and then my final verdict. Like, do I recommend this um, product? So. Specs. First off, you can get three colors in this. You can get the white, or it's also known as snow, which is exactly like this. You can also get it in two other colors called sky and sunrise, which are like a blue and like a pinky reddy color. It runs Android TV 10, um, which is called Google TV now, but that's just what it runs. It runs Android TV 10. It has a two up. Uh, Peak resolution of 4K 60fps, it has Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, um, for the best audio quality, quoted by, that's literally quoted by Google, and basically any product that has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos, they say that. It only has about 4 gigabytes of usable storage, so usable storage, but what I mean by that is it has 8 gigabytes of storage on it, except, you know, mal malware, wow. Um, like Google stuff takes up that basically four gigabytes because it has four point four gigabytes is the technical uh, how many gigabytes it has of usable storage basically for um, for Google um, or for for your apps for your games for your, all that stuff is for about four hundred gigabytes or four gigabytes sorry not four hundred gigabytes smart um, it also changes the so it used to have micro USB um, on the on, as the port, and now it has USB-C, which is like amazing, and very very glad they did that. Uh, the goods and the bad. So it has the goods, the good slash bad, because it's like it doesn't really work that well. Is that it has side loading, so you can get um, Cody. Um, which is a streaming service that a lot of people use for free if you don't have like TV and stuff like that. Um, there's, uh, you can get Xbox Game Pass or xCloud on there, um, and all that stuff. I did put xCloud on here, and then I deleted it right away because it was very painful actually to download it, because side loading is just, it's not that easy of a thing. Which I did try xCloud, um, except it didn't work very well because, you know, um, it, it relies a lot on Wi-Fi, and it's just this little thing doesn't really have that good of Wi-Fi. It, it, it took a lot of Wi-Fi, and a lot of, took a, it took a lot of Wi-Fi for it to work, and it, it didn't work that well. My Wi-Fi isn't that good anyways, so I didn't think it would work that well anyways. It doesn't really work that well on the end, this um, Android phone that I'm filming on right now. That's just what I feel on. But it doesn't really work that well on the Android phone either. Um, it works okay. There'll be a later video on that as well, by the way. Um, but you don't have to use Wi-Fi either. You can use Ethernet with U because it has USB-C. So you can put a USB-C dongle on it, um, which is nice for people that want Ethernet. They, they don't have access to Wi-Fi, which is like very rare now. But a lot of people just want Ethernet anyways for streaming and stuff like that. It, they, it's more... Um, it's a lot more, um, it's a lot more secure, not secure, wow, it's a lot more, um, 
in my opinion, for me, Ethernet is more st sta stable. Like, Wi-Fi is kind of like, it's, it dips and dives and all that stuff, whereas Wi-Fi or Ethernet is just stable. Um, but the Wi-Fi on this thing is actually incredible, and I don't think you need the Ethernet, but some people do. And you can also put more storage devices on there, um, like a USB, USB, um, USB flash drive and stuff like that. Again, I have not tried this, but essentially you should be able to because it's USB C. It runs Android. It has a file manager. Should work fine. I don't know why you'd want to. You can also plug in like um, a dongle for a keyboard and a, a keyboard with a trackpad and stuff like that. That I can see use for because. The, 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 it's not super easy to use the digital thing just like you have an Xbox, right? Like, but, anyway, it's not that easy to use the keyboard on here. Whereas with, you know, a USB dongle and keyboard, it would be way easier. Um, but I guess if you have a keyboard and mouse, and then you put the bat on, and then you put the storage device on there, and I mean, you can do whatever you want from there. So, anyway, USB-C... To make it back on track, USB-C really helps out with this thing. Um, it also gives it more power, so that's also very, very useful. Um, it, um, mm, the interface. So, the interface of it looks incredible. And everything looks amazing, actually. It, it, it makes me think of a Google Pixel device, right? Of course, it's Google. Same as Google. Now, it works really great. Everything is based off of a For You page, or For You tab, okay? So, your home is basically your For You. The next thing you have is a Movies tab, which goes in more depth into just movies, of course, and then again with the TV shows tab. Then you also have an Apps tab, which is basically Google Play. Um, uh, it's basically where you download, where you find all your apps. Also, in that For You page, you, there is a section for apps, and there's a section for continue watching and stuff like that. It should basically just be called Home, in my opinion. It shouldn't be called For You, because, I mean, it does, it does just basically give you uh, recommendations for you, um, but it also gives you basically your whole app, apps library there, and it gives you, it basically is at your home, right? But they call it for you. Um, the remote is very, very easy to use. It has the um, Google Assistant button, it has back button, it has the D-pad, um, it has the home button. Volume is on here, it's on the very, very side, um, and that is actually kind of cool how it has volume and all stuff. It also, in my opinion, is really cool. It has power and it has input for your TV or for your soundbar or for, you can power the Chromecast completely off or on. That's how the power button works. You can configure it however you want in the settings app. It also has two buttons for Netflix and YouTube, which I find are very weird. They probably just put them there to, to make, to give you more space or something, like to give you more I don't know. I never use it, and I don't see the use in it, but if you use it, you use it. Um, lastly, the thing that I don't like about it is that my Google Home doesn't control it as well as my old Chromecast did. So basically, the old Chromecast, you would say, you know the words, and... Then my media on the TV would lower the volume, and then I can say pause, and it would pause, and it could hear me properly, and all that stuff with ease. Like, it, would, it was really easy. Now, with this one, because, I, th I think it's because of the remote, to be honest with you, because they give you a remote, and they're like, oh, you don't need this. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Please let me know in the comments below, please, because I'd love to fix this. But whenever I say, then um, it doesn't dim. It just comes on. It doesn't dim the media volume, doesn't do any of that stuff. So it can't hear me very well. I've, I've actually done it where I said pause and it didn't do anything. It just went away because it heard things from the media. So it was like, oh, never mind. It wasn't me you were talking to. Well, it was and you're wrong. So um, like I said, please, if you do know how to fix this, I would really, really like to know um, in the comments below. Because the feature was very, very useful when, you know, you're eating or something and you just yell at Google. 
Um, also, laziness is very nice. <laughs> so, first before I say my recommendations and my final opinion of it and all that stuff, I want to tell you the price because... Comparing this to the competition, this thing is really, really cheap, and it's also the exact same price. It is $6,999 Canadian. Would I really recommend this device? My answer is completely yes. It is so much cheaper than the Apple TV, and you guys know how much of an Apple fan I am, so that's what I compare it to instantly. But it also compares, its main competitors actually are the Roku, if I pronounce that right, the Fire Stick, that's it. And I think it's better than all of those, to be honest. Now, my dad just got, actually, like yesterday, a Fire, T a fire Stick. So I'm going to do a, rev a review on that, and I'm going to let you guys know in that video if I do like it better than this Google. Um, I don't think I will, because it is old Android TV. So it's Android TV, I guess it would be eight or it's eight or nine. It's still Android TV, right? It's not Google TV. So it's got a whole different interface. It also has a different interface because it's Fire. It's like, it's Fire TV. It's not actually Google TV or Android TV. It's Fire TV. So it's a skin, another skinned version of Google. And I, looking at it in pictures, I don't like the way it looks compared to the Google TV. And I know you guys are like, well, interface doesn't really matter. Interface does actually matter to me for some reason. Um, it's kind of like Apple. Like, that's why I like the new iOSs and all that stuff is because it looks, it looks nice. And if it looks nice, I want to use it. Or like the new Androids look amazing and I'd like to, I'd like to use one, right? Um, interface really helps day to day, especially if it's just your daily media device. The interface really, really helps, even just the way it looks. A skin really, really helps the way that you want to use it, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's basically the whole video on the Google Chromecast with Google TV. Um, I hope that really helped you out because it it really helped me out. Um, I When I was watching other videos when, before I got this video, or before I got the Chromecast, there wasn't really much like it. Like, it's kind of like the new thing from Google. It's kind of the way Android is. Google always gets everything first, so this Google will get everything first. And it surprisingly works like this. I have two Google Homes in my house. Um, I have a bunch of smart plugs in my house, and I have, I'm getting some Philips Hues. Like, there's a bunch of smart stuff in my house that actually connects via the Google Home and not to my Apple devices. Well, it does. You have the Google Home app. But I actually... Google works really, really well with Apple. Surprisingly. Like, it's it's Android versus iOS, but there's a lot of Google things that work really well on iPad. I mean, I use Google Calendar instead of the Apple Calendar just because I like the way that it works. So, um... Yeah, that's just kind of my full-on recommendation of why I prefer, you know, anything Google. I mean, you guys watched the, hopefully you watched, the Google um, Starter Pack video. Basically, it was the Google Chromecast and the Google Home. Well, now, I would actually recommend this over the Google uh, Chromecast just because it's $39. It's $30 extra. This is $69.99, and it's $39.99. It's all Canadian. Um, so... The extra $30 is most certainly worth it over the regular Google. I mean, you get a full-on remote and side-loading, and you just get a lot bigger experience on the Google uh, Google Chromecast with Apple or Google TV. Wow, that was a lot of mouthful. Chromecast with Google TV. The Google TV is definitely a deal-breaker, and it's something that I think everyone should get. I mean... If, if it doesn't matter, like, if it's a Roku, if it's a Fire TV, it's if it's a Google TV, with Chrome, if it's a Chromecast with Google TV, it's a Apple TV even, if you really, really, really want that. Um, it's definitely, it definitely helps out, like, especially us, we don't have TV or, like, cable. 
um, it's super duper useful. I mean, everything is on this little tiny device. So, I really like it. Um, it connects to like literally everything. It's just one media device for everything. That and my Xbox and, you know, your whole TV is set up for anything. Movies, anything. TV-wise, if you have Cody, like, it's a bunch of different stuff. So, thank you guys for watching and uh, see you in the next one.